Hi there, welcome back to the new lecture. In this short lecture, we will be covering the demonstration of how to enable and configure with a live demo remote control or remote help for your end users. That being said, let's jump into the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center and navigate to Tenant Administration. And you see here, remote help will be there. So within this remote help, you could configure and the status, once you configure this status here, you should be able to find out here as enable. But if you see here, if I just try to go to the configure button, I do not get anything under settings because everything got disabled. The reason being, if you can guess, I do not have a licenses assigned. So as a first step, I need to activate the license assignment. Uh, this is a, uh, this is a tenant level. So you need to purchase the licensing. Otherwise you could even go for in your lab for a 90 days trial. So I would, you know, go for 90 days trial by clicking on that link that would actually point to your admin.microsoft.com, which is the office 365 admin center portal. And there I have an option to purchase. So if you see each license at this point of time, it is going to cost you per user 3.5 USD. So $3.50 and if you want to, you know, start a free trial, all you have to do is click on start free trial. That would actually take it to this window where you will be getting 250 licenses for free when you click on a try now button for a 90 days period of time. So once I click on a try now, it's, uh, it's actually loading the page and then it will come back uh, with a continue option so that it is successfully purchased trial license of 250 licenses for me. And now as a next step, I should be able to validate by going into the uh, billing section. So click on billing and your licenses. So this is where it's going to list all my current licenses. If you see here, remote help add-on, which is a premium license, uh, which is available uh, for 250 users. So that being said, now we have a licenses and we should be able to go back to Microsoft Intune portal or admin center and then configure it. Now in this portal, you could also assign the licenses for different users. If you do not have a license assignment for the remote help, you cannot take a control or you cannot offer a help for remote users. So in my case, I've assigned here for Chris and Paddy for the two users. And if you remember in the beginning of the lecture, we told that this is at tenant level. And now you can see that there are 89 days left for the trial period. So now if you click on remote help, you will be getting a different status. You see here, it's still in a disable, but as soon as you click on a configure, you have an option to enable the remote help this is the first option. Second thing would be, do you want to offer for unenrolled devices? Meaning if the user is not even enrolled into Intune, still do you want to you know, offer help? If that's an option, uh, will be useful even though the device is not managed by Intune, but the user have a tenant, a tenant information, meaning the user was created and user able to log in from the same tenant so meaning the user have a user id and the password in that tenant so in my case if you see here a memcos.com so within this domain i have a user account but he's maybe coming from an unmanaged intune device then he should be able to even offer or get the support also the next thing would be the chat so if you want to you know, chat with the end user you should be able to choose once you configure these the options will be showing you here as the enable earlier it was a disabled state and now you should be able to see other option like remote uh, help for uncontrolled or unenrolled devices yes and the chat also be enabled this is what we can do and the next step would be uh, how, how do we offer right the support remote support we need to offer so to do that we need to have an agent to be installed so what we do is we can go back to ms forward slash download remote help so that url gonna give you an exe file and that exe file can be either package uh, to win32 format and then 
simply you could be able to you know uh, download so I just downloaded that file and I'm getting a long lengthy name right so if you see here the installation command I should be able to use a remote help installer.exe so what I've done is the long lengthy name I have renamed that exe file to the short name and then I'm passing this parameters like quite mode and the accept terms and conditions and then enable auto update meaning if the new version is going to release for example if this is a 4.1.1 tomorrow 4.1.2 releases it will automatically update so i no need to you know again recreate a package that's what i wanted to do it so i would simply copy this command line altogether and i would you know use in my packaging but in this case if you see there's a long lengthy name so first thing i have to rename this to short name so let me shortly rename it and you see here this long lengthy name has been renamed to short name called remote help installer.exe and now i have the intune wrapper package utility so this is gonna uh, use for the packaging in any case if you have not seen or not checked for the win32 uh, package deployment method uh, this is how you would be you know, normally packaging with the help of in intune so all you have to do is just execute the command line and then it would be asking for the package source so in my case that's where the source is available but what is a file name so in my case the file name is remote install.exe so I would just give that name and where do you want you know put the output the package format file so I would be you know, putting in a packaging format and click enter that's it it's going to create a dot in tune view format all I have to do is I should be able to upload this package as a win32 so you could you know navigate to the applications from Windows and then add an application and choose the app type as in this case win32 app and uh, Windows app package source this is where the package source is available simply upload that file and fill up the required information for example i wanted to give a meaningful name like a remote help desk or help intune application okay and i could be giving the meaningful description and the publisher name as a microsoft and the version so if you're not sure about the version just go to the properties of that exe file which you have downloaded go to the details you see here 4.1.1.0 so i should be able to give the same name same version information oops so I'll just give here 4.1.1.0 and this is going to be my computer management tool and the category and also you should be able to give your owner developer privacy URL information URL and also the logo so logo makes an easy when a user actually try to look into this application from company portal application then it looks uh, easy for them so we should be able to actually go back to um, internet and search for this logo a appropriate logo and then uh, give the logo information so in my case i've already downloaded the logo here so i would be you know, giving that logo so i'll simply click on that logo to upload so that's how the logo appears for me and give a name uh, even the notes for example this application gonna useful for help desk to make or to take the remote control of the pc and the command line if you remember i did explained in my whiteboard very clearly uh, that's a command line which i'm going to use it right so that's a exe file which is actually going to trigger but what is that command line you're going to use it uh, within this uh, package so the command line would be the uh, that's a command line remote help installer.exe this is what we talked about it and this is a command for uninstallation so you can share this command lines and simply click on next choose the architecture as 64 bit and windows a bill number which you want to you know, make it as at least 1909 now in a detection for manual configuration detection click on add choose the file extension file uh, and the path of this would be the uh, program files remote help and the exe file that is going to actually trigger is a remote help.exe and create a role within this detection rule as a string rule meaning you're actually putting the version information like in this case 4.1.1.0 if you just go back 
so that's a version right so you give that version and the properties anything as a greater than or equivalent to this version because we have chosen in the installation command as the auto install meaning automatically it can upgrade also right so we should be you know giving that and there's no supersede there is no dependencies and coming back to the assignment we know that um, the assignment group so in my case i'm actually using here as a demo group so i would you know just stick to that and uh, click on next and it and here very important would be the filter mode if you uh, are not using the filters always try to use a filter so that you know you know where you are actually targeting filters are very useful in this case i'm not going to apply any filter the reason being i've chosen if you remember while i'm configuring remote help i wanted to offer uh, enrolled and not enrolled devices also right so everybody i'm ready to uh, help with the help of remote help application so i should be able to do that so simply click on uh, not apply these filters but in your case if you want to apply for only company owned devices you should be you know choosing as a company owned that's it and the next step would be definitely installing this application on uh, one would be the since it is targeted the client will gets automatically downloads and gets applied the software and the second one would be you have to you know or uh, try with manual method because in my case my admin mode i'm going to give it try manual but in this case i have actually dragged the client machine there's a client machine there's no application so this is my uh, source so i'm actually installing manually on my test machine uh, or in other way i would say this is my admin so on admin pc i'm actually installing manually uh, these are the steps that I have to do it and uh, I should be able to even launch also and if you see here That's where the uh, remote help software got uh, Showing here so I should be able to sign in so in this case. I'm actually signing in uh, With my admin mode with an account. So th this is a general, you know um, Error kind of thing you can ignore that and post to that you should be able to you know see the privacy and this is where you can you know generate the code or enter the code but this is a client machine now i jump back to this is a client machine so when you see this background or when you see here this is a windows 10 client machine so on this machine we did even target it this is where the chris user is logged in so on this machine i'm actually restarting so the policy gets uh, automatically applied and in a minute or so uh, once i Pull the policy i should be able to see the client application as a notification you see here there's a client application got automatically installed and it is asking me to sign in so i'm gonna uh, sign in because the user is already android user that's why it's just asking for uh, username automatically taken and it's just asking for the password to enter so i would be able to you know enter the passcode and if it needs any kind of additional mfa or entering any additional details that all would be you no know, trigger based on your security policy so this is nothing to do with the application remote help it's all about the uh, your azure ad specific configuration so in this case i was approved mfa now i should be able to log in and then it is asking my privacy and now I'm an actually on a device called this is my this is my admin mode okay so if you see paddy hyphen ud01 this is the admin called the paddy uh, at memcos.com and other user is a chris so if i just uh, switch back to the user called chris you you would you know come to know but you know if i just generated since i have generated from uh, paddy the code uh, this is a code i need to you know, give to the my user so i'm just copy this and i pass this information to the end user so i would you know enter here that code as the chris as the username so if you see here uh, on a, a paddy machine what i've done is actually i generated a security code so that code was you know shared here to user called chris so now chris when he submitted the code uh, it gets automatically connected to Paddy machine. So in this case, uh, Paddy can you know automatically take control of this PC. If you see here, uh, it is actually showing waiting for the person helping you to you know set up a uh, session. So if you just go back to that screen, you have an option there to you know take a full screen or just a view only. So I've taken a full screen. Now if I come back here again, 
says hey do you want to allow this user is uh, going to take control and this is a tenant information and um, he's requesting a full control do you want to allow do you trust it basically so if i click on yes automatically it's gonna give the full control for the uh, remote user called paddy and then i should be able to perform some kind of an actions like opening uh, i would try to you know put it side by side for example side this another side this uh, you see here uh, the right side is actual windows and the left side would be the remote session so there's you no know, lag actually if you see start button still there but if i just you know click on somewhere uh, it's gone uh, oops let me bring the left side right side you see as i move it actually coming back there the right side also and the left side also so the left side is the uh, remote screen and the right side is the actually chris users so chris if is moving something it's going to come up so this is the user called uh, chris so he is trying to you know run the uac prompt so it is actually passed and it is asking for the chris to you know accept it so you see here chris able to do perform some kind of actions if he leave automatically the session ends up if he wants to you know reconnect he can click on a reconnect so that the same reconnect button will come up so if the user allows it can be reestablish the connection since we have not yet closed it it can re-establish similarly you have an option to draw and say that boss this is what you know happening this is what you should you know, click on something like that you can you know uh, do that and also task manager that's a task manager and uh, also full screen you can you know restart so so a couple of options you have that's a restart button so if you want to restart you can restart it and the full screen and multiple monitors also you have the option so these are the couple of options that are available and then if i just go back here if you see here uh, this is where you are going to actually monitor the number of sessions currently opened all of that but in this case even though we are actually open the client to or one session we have already opened uh, to take the remote control but still it's not adapted because do not trust the or do not expect at least the immediate uh, reporting point of view it takes some time so let's say if i just go back here also the same session remote help uh, session is not done so what i'll do is i'll simply close it and i'll wait for a few more minutes before i show you the screen and then if i do a quick refresh i should be able to get it back here from a zero sessions to one session you see because i've waited for some time my friends honestly and you see this is a user who has you know tried to take the con uh, control of that this desktop and um, this this is where the logs will you know available so on a client machine uh, you see here under user temp profile uh, basically which is under app data temp remote help folder this is where the logs will be available and also if you just go back to the event view point of view if you're looking something you can navigate to applications events and then look at the remote help under operations all the logs will be available i hope this short lecture is useful for you uh, thank you for watching in case if you have any questions please feel free to comment it